Giovanna, I'm a freshman at Heidelberg University. We're just gonna ask you a couple questions today. And I'm Alyssa, I'm from Heidelberg. Okay. okay. So first we're gonna start off by asking you guys, names. did you guys- Names. names. Your names. Yes. Sadella. Oh, spell it. Oh, spell it? <laughs> C-E-D-E-L-L-A. And then what about you? And I'm Jim. Jim? Okay. Oberlander. 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 Well, it's nice to meet you guys. Glad to meet you. Did you guys grow up in Seneca County? No. No. Where did you guys grow up at? I was born in Winnet County. Winnet? Okay. And then what uh, about you? I was you? born in uh, Canton, Ohio. Canton? Canton. Oh, I'm from Akron. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Stark I'm familiar. Uh, Stark County, I believe. Mm hmm. Yeah. Then I moved to Desires about two years after that. Really? Lived there for. Oh. Oh, day out of there. I went nine years of school in Desires. So, childhood through nine years of school. Then I moved to Upper Sandusky. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from Upper Scotia High School in 1945. That's exciting. Did you like it there? At Upper Sandusky? Yeah. Yes, very much so. Yes. It was a quiet community mm -hmm. at that time. We kind of roused it up. <laughs> now what about you? What high school did you graduate from? Uh, Nevada High School. It's uh, it been consolidated. It's now Winford now, mm -hmm. but I went all twelve years there. That's exciting. I lived uh, south of Nevada on a farm between Nevada and Marion, and uh, first eighteen years of my life I spent there. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Columbus. <laughs> Columbus. Did you like Columbus? Yes, I loved Columbus. I went to business school there and worked in an insurance company. Really? Then I met this fellow and got married and we went to Ashland. <laughs> That's exciting. I was in Ashland College at the time. We lived there, what, five years? I worked, uh, I went to college there and I worked at a uh, doormat, rubber doormat company. We weaved door mats and uh, I was a jack of all trades in that business but it was an extra income so, and I was in the uh, service so I was on the GI Bill while I was in school. So. Did you guys come from large families? I just had one brother. I had two sisters. So did you guys have like any cousins or? A few cousins, yes. But it was more of like an immediate family thing, just like brother, parents and... Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's why I always wanted to have a larger family. We had five children. Ports in high school? Yeah. College? Not in college, I played uh, high school basketball and baseball. So I had three years of basketball, all well, four with my freshman year. And uh, I was a kingpin in the varsity at Upper Snusky. What about you? Did you play any sports? Oh, at that time, Girls basketball was very boring. They had that rule where you only went half court and all that. Yeah. I went through that but didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. I like it the way it's played now. Yeah, I played basketball in my high school and now I'm playing in, at Heidelberg. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Did you guys, like, when you guys played, was it like a team? Like, did you guys work as a team? Yes. He did. Well, yeah, I know, I know. Ours was more or less gym class. They didn't have girls teams. And Were you a driver's ed teacher at yes. one point? Yes, uh, 26 years. Wow. Since what made you want to become a driver's ed teacher? Uh, I thought about saving people's lives. Teaching them the correct way how to drive and 
a lot of them use the same principles today, but some of them, you know, you drift away and put a little your own remedy in and get in trouble. Yeah. But I taught basic, basic stuff how I'm driving. That's good. Has any like scary incidents or close calls happened while you were in the car with someone, like teaching them? Scary incident, incidents? Or something that you might just have like remembered? Yeah, hey, I remember a couple. We were coming down Wall Street where the railroad track is, and I told the guy to break before he got to track, then release the brake and be over the accelerator. Well, he got part of it, and we got over the westbound track, but barely, and he jammed it in the park. So I reached over very quickly and pulled it down, hit the key first, and then pulled down the drive and we got out of there. Mm -hmm. The train was within 22 seconds of the crossing. That was a scary situation. That, yeah, that sounds really scary. And one other time we were on uh, Morrison Road coming on to 224. And there was a semi truck coming up from the right hand side. And I always taught the drivers to look around the corner and not cross the road. And he was looking across the road. So I grabbed hold of the wheel and pulled us over. And a 180 degree turn, we were back on the safe, safe side. That was close. Uh, that, was, that was kind of scary. <laughs> With uh, three other passengers. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to take the wheel and get get everybody out of the situation. Uh, well, that's just natural situation. Yeah. Out of the sports, the two sports that you played in high school, yeah. which one did you enjoy the most? I, I enjoyed basketball quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But when baseball came into season, I, I enjoyed that. I think I was the only one that ever hit a home run on our team. We were playing at Sycamore, and way out in center field was the river, and the ball reached the river. <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoyed that. What about you? Like, what interests you throughout your high school? Oh, I love basketball and football and baseball and. I like all sports. Well, he officiated for years. He hasn't told you that. And so uh, it would be stay at home alone with the kids. So when they were little, I bundled them up and we went to the ball games. Mm -hmm. And my kids grew up thinking that everybody on the earth went to ball games on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Because <laughs> that was their lifestyle. <laughs> now, you guys said you have kids. Yes. How many? We have five children. All boys or girls? And Three boys and two girls. That's exciting. Now was it hard like raising them in the time period? I wouldn't say. Um, in fact, in retrospect, it was much easier then than it would be now. I'd be scared to death to raise one child now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, back then, parents we're friends and um, when the kids told us one story we checked up on to see if that was an accurate story or not and um, we called each other and we knew where the kids were at all times and they played out in the backyard after dark and well, we had a swimming pool back there and they had fun i enjoyed i loved little kids mm -hmm. in fact i worked for 25 years with remedial reading with children, little children. But um, now I think the world is very, very scary for kids. Yeah. So were you a teacher? I was a teacher's aide and um, under the Title I program. And uh, then I went to Heidelberg and did some special reading classes to teach. I worked with kindergarten, first and second graders. I love the little bitty ones. 
I think there's a building up at Heidelberg now that's more like an elementary. And what cool. Agler. Yeah. So okay. they turned it into a building for us now. So oh. it's like the railings are all low and the stairs are... Yeah, you can oh really? Mm -hmm. Well, the only reason I retired, those little chairs got to hurting my back <laughs> too much. <laughs> so how was how you guys met? But like, what made you guys want to like date each other and finish your lives together? In college at the time, come up, we'd come home every Friday night, and uh, I had separated from the girl that I was going with before I went to college and uh, so I was kind of loose and fancy free and she was working in the veterans office so I found out that she was on the loose so I asked her to, to go out. She hesitated the first time but then her girlfriends talked her into it and so uh, we got to dating on the weekends and and uh, hooked on ever since. That's cute. I worked at Ashland College in the bursar's office when he was in school. So I enjoyed that job a lot. I liked it. Now what did you do there? Well, it was during the GI Bill time and so we had to um, keep track of all the veterans and the, and the material that they got and their tuition. But there was also the switchboard at that time for the college. And um, w another girl and I would take turns operating the switchboard. In fact, the football ca coach, George Don, just didn't want to be bothered. They didn't have an AD, AD at that time. So he'd give me dates and names of schools. Now if they call, you schedule a football game at then. So I was actually scheduling football games. Wow. <laughs> but uh, then we did the bookkeeping accounting. Uh, I, I really liked that job. If you can guess, how many football games do you think you attended? Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. Do you have a favorite one? Favorite team? Yeah. Well, we like the Big Ten and all sports. So football and basketball, we're Big Ten followers. Ohio State, for a Buckeye. <laughs> but we enjoy watching the other schools too. I don't care for the pros football. Mm -hmm. I do watch the pros in baseball, but I don't care for pros in basketball or football. Yeah. I feel like the pros, in my opinion, it's like they don't really try as hard. It's like since they're up there, it's like they're just like, okay, well, let's play to get money. Right, right. right. That's why they're the money game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the old times, like when they yeah. just play just to play and That's be That's why I like the college level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like the idea that they want to pay, play, uh, pay uh, college players to play for sports. Yeah. They're getting a scholarship, and that's quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. And they should be satisfied with that mm -hmm. and not live beyond their means. Yeah. Speaking of sports, why did you want to become a referee? Well, I saw it was the next way to make a little extra money. Mm -hmm. And I was around kids, and uh, I, I just enjoyed being around people. I had very few problems in uh, fish eating. Uh, tried to give them a down the middle of the road contest by the rules, and uh, so I, I enjoyed it. I, I worked uh, basketball for. 49 years and football was 50 years. So a history teacher? No, not history. Uh, counting. Okay. I taught accounting. I taught one year biology, which I dis was very disgusted. Mm -hmm. It was at the time where college students were taking 
college biology, and then they dropped that credit and they could take general biology. So that put an influx on general biology in, in our high school. And everybody was loading up on biology, and so there was more classes than the biology teachers could, could handle. And I had a biology major, which I regretted. <laughs> but I had four classes straight in the morning. So, you know, a lecture would get going with first period, second period got a good dose of it, third period got half a dose, fourth period got about a fourth. So I, I really hated that because it, I got bored with it. <laughs> but we had fun. And uh, they all got through. They not all were college students. Understand, but there were quite a few college students in the class. So. Tell tell them why you have a biology major too. Well, in college, <laughs> I started out. I was going to be a funeral director, and uh, I got in uh, 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 what course was it? Well, you were close to the end. You had applied to bo in bombing school, yeah. and you decided, I don't want to do this. I want to teach. So he went actually went five years. He had a double major and a minor. Then we survived. I uh, I had a I liked the course. Okay. Liked the course in Latin, and of course she had a major in high school. So uh, my. Latin teacher was at home. Mm -hmm. and my first job interview was going to be interviewing for to teach Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, even though I had an A in Latin, I, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so how did you manage to like get the information needed to teach Latin? So I did. <laughs> I did his homework. <laughs> I memorized a lot of the things that we went over at home. And of course I get along with the teacher too. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys still speak a little bit of Latin? No. Latin's not a speaking language. Latin, I would advise everybody to take it because I learned English grammar. Yeah. In Latin. I took a Latin class maybe two years ago, like in the summer for like th maybe like three months. And it was it was exciting to learn it. You learn a lot of grammar and, and that, but it's not a speaking lang yeah. language. Would you guys like to share anything else? <laughs> Ask questions we don't know what to really want to know. He was in World War II. Really? Yeah, I uh, graduated from high school on uh, June, June the 5th, I think. And a buddy of mine. Of 1945. And, and I went right away. We didn't wait for the draft. We went and enlisted, you might say. And, uh, we went through basic training and all that. When we went to get our clothes and stuff to be assigned, by, they said if you get long underwear, you're going to go to Germany. If you get khakis, you're going to go to the South Pacific. So we both got long underwear, <laughs> which I was like thankful for. And we spent about four days on board a Liberty ship going over to Germany and coming home we were five days getting out, out of uh, Germany because each time we go down the, the channel something happened to the ship so we had to go back up and change ships so that meant we had to transfer all the groceries and everything to the other ship 
and get the boys back on another ship. So well, finally on the fifth day away we got out of there, got past the Straits of Hope Dover. And we were 500 miles out of New York on Christmas Eve. So we made it in, in the shore uh, two days before New Year's Eve. So we got into the uh, separation camp and we went, didn't get separated the right way. So eight of us went into New York New Year's Eve with about ten dollars in our pocket. <laughs> so we, uh, we didn't eat too much. But we were on the street at midnight, and they said that when you were on the street, if you want to get across the street, know the block you want to get across, get over to the curb. Because when the light would change, you had to just that amount of time to get to the other side of the street. And it was pocket to pocket. I mean, people were crowded at that time, not as much as they are today. So after that, we went looking for a place to stay, stopped in met several hotels, and we finally found one that they had a uh, uh, wedding room with a uh, big bed and so forth. So we got to use that as our sleeping quarters. and. They didn't charge us anything more. So we got up next morning, went back to, back to camp. Got on the train, got sent home. Oh, it was fun. Last big night for about eight of us. We were together all the time, we were overseas. I don't know where those boys are now at this time. They don't know where I am. <coughs> I'm not sure I can see them if they're alive. You never know. I'm 92 and they would be probably the same age if they were living. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you guys for your time. Well, quite all right. We enjoyed it.